this. You have no ex you have no idea how excited I am for today's episode because I am no longer just recording directly from my phone. Yes, that's what I was doing. I actually have a microphone and I am so excited. I hope you're not picking up on every single thing I am saying. Like if I'm swallowing or taking a sip of matcha tea. Oh, ooh, ooh. I am drinking today a... I invented this. I don't care what anyone tells you or what people say or what you've even seen. I invented the um, pumpkin spice matcha latte, matcha tea latte with oat milk. I invented that. I made it. So people can say all they want, you know. I guess somebody else could invent it as well. But I have it in the cutest little mug I got from a pottery place. Oh my gosh, okay. I had to take a sip. So for my birthday, we went to a place where they make pottery and then you can paint it. And... We did that, so I painted a mug, and people painted different things in our family. It was so much fun. Um, and my mom, Caleb's mom, wants to everybody paint a plate, and then it gets fired and everything, and and then for Thanksgiving and Christmas, we use our own plates for the holidays or whenever we're there. So exciting. Uh, I thought that was so much fun. I'm super excited for that. But what I was going to say was I got this mug from there and it's like pinkish red and then it has like a layer of white glaze over it. So part of it is like white and part of it is like pink and it's like pink red, pinkish red. It's like a coral kind of, it's so beautiful. And then it has like a cutout of South Dakota, which is basically a square with some little squiggles. And it says home in big black letters, like imprinted on it. So cute. It's so dang darling. Oh my gosh. On my Instagram, if you go to Georgia Hertzberg underscore, you can, you can follow me there. But if you go there, I have a picture there actually you know what I think I posted a story so I will post a post of this cutie cutie mug I love it but I am so excited to go back to that pottery place that is so much fun and it was funny because people in our family like Caleb's mom they just wanted to keep doing more things, painting more things. And I and I totally agreed. I was like super addicted to it and just wanting to keep painting. And just, I just didn't want to stop. So I'm drinking my matcha, my pumpkin spice matcha tea with oat milk out of this cutie cutie mug. And I am super excited for today's podcast not because just now I'm speaking out of a microphone but there's other reasons today's episode is going to be super super fun I am very excited about it today I wanted to talk a little bit about Actually, a lot. Of course, you get your yawn in right away. Well, I want to talk a lot about mom things. If you're not a mom yet, I mean, stay tuned. You probably, you could be a mom. And if you're not even a woman, you could be a dad. Which will, this could apply to you or your spouse. I want to talk 
a little bit about a stay being a stay at home mom versus being a working mom. There's a few different gray areas in today's episode that I'm going to talk about as well. There's some clear defined scenarios. I just wanted to say it like that. I'm going to actually talk in a British accent for a little bit and see how it goes. So you that sounded funny. Actually, okay. So I guess I'll just start and I'll get right into it. So well, the reason I wanted to talk about this was because I have so many friends that are either doing one or the other, obviously, you have to pick one, but I just thought it was super interesting to talk about this and kind of like flesh out the pros and the cons because I myself am just you know I feel like I know what I would want to do but maybe by the end of this I'll know for sure what I want to do I think I'm still open to future things of what it could or might look like in the future So, I hope by the end of this, there's more clarity, not just for me, but for you, and maybe it helps you make a decision if you don't already know. Maybe you don't have an option. I know, I don't think my parents had an option when I was little, you know, I think my mom did want stay at home for a little bit. But then she had to go back to work. So, and I think she had to go back to work. I I have never really asked her. But I know she stayed home with us for a few years. Well, so many yawns for you. I hope you like the sound of yawns. And you're not, like, grossed out. Okay. So working mom versus a stay-at-home mom and in today's society there is the potential option for a stay-at-home work from home mom and if you own your own business I mean these all these things so I am going to begin I think I'm going to start by defining each of these and go from there. I'm only going to define... Okay. Okay. So first I'm going to define stay-at-home mom defined. I've heard people call these kind of people like a home engineer. I thought that was hilarious. Hilarious. Uh, They have kids. And they stop them from maiming themselves. Um, That is something that my sister would say she does. That she was a home engineer and she would prevent her kids from maiming themselves. But it's, it's basically a mom that stays at home and takes care of kids. And that's what her job is. Which is one of the most important jobs in the whole world. I think it is the most important job. In a way. Because you're raising your own kids. Anyways. I know you need to provide for the family too. So that is super important as well. It's. Yeah. Very, 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 very important. Because you can't raise your kids if you can't feed your kids. You know? I don't know. Okay. So. And then working mom. I kind of made my own definition. But. Gets the kids up and ready and out the door, takes them to daycare or family member's house or to school and continues to pursue a career and then they get to pick them up after work. 
and be with them towards the evening. So I know that was a long definition, but basically a mom that goes to work and a mom that stays home and takes care of the kids, okay? Easy enough. I am going to start with working mom pros. Now, I'm sure there's more pros than I'm about to say. I tried to think of a ton, but I'm going to do my best here. So, the first pro for a working mom is you get to escape in a way. Like, you get to leave the day in, day out, at home, taking care of the kids, same routine, whatnot. You know, you get to go out and explore the world. You get to see new faces. You get to meet new people every single day. You get to leave this job of taking care of kids and you get to go do something else to switch gears in your brain, so to speak. Like, you just need a break sometimes and a working mom gets the pleasure of doing that. And... I think everybody needs a break at some point. But the working mom just gets like an extended break in a way. And that's so nice in a way too. Because you get to use a different portion of your brain for different things. And you are... excited about different things you get to be like talk with adults you know go drive take a drive by yourself you know and not have to take the kids in and out you know you're by yourself and in a lot of ways that's like the coolest thing you know okay so you get to do the next thing is you get to do different things each day. Every day is different in some sort of way because your job could look different every day, your drive to work, you know, uh, the people you meet at the coffee shop on the way to work. You know, if you have like a really different job where your job is completely different every day, I mean, that in itself is amazing. You know, your, your day isn't day in day out the same the same there's a lot going on at your job that could be different and there's so many different people's lives that you get to interact with that every day is different in their life so their life naturally blends into your life and their life affects your life so honestly it's pretty cool that You get to do so many different things every single day and still get to, you know, have a family. So, next, you can pursue your dreams. So, I think this one is super cool because everybody has dreams, everybody has goals, everybody has things they want to accomplish in life. Um, Even if they don't know it yet, they often will realize something or a few things that they want, they aspire to and they want to accomplish. And, And if you have kids early, you know, that time frame for you to have kids might be short. That time frame for you to accomplish XYZ goals and dreams might be, you know, wavering or you might just have a less amount of time while you were single, you know, without kids. And so a working mom gets to continue to pursue her dreams. And honestly, that is so motivating and so exciting and so inspiring. And uh, it just keeps life spicy, you know, with a family and a husband or wife, you know, it keeps life from becoming stale because you are going after a dream and a goal and a a plan and a desire and something you're working towards 
you know, and I find a lot of moms that that don't get to continue to work and do their job, whether it be finances or whether they don't get to because, you know, whatever, and they have to work. Wait, am I not saying the right thing? People that don't get to continue with their job or their dreams and goals sometimes can feel like they are not necessarily themselves anymore because they are no longer pursuing what they want. Their entire life revolves around whatever the little baby wants or the kids want. And your life is put, in a way, on a back burner because, uh, well, when it comes to your dreams and goals. And sometimes, you know, in the occasion you get to your business or whatever you are doing, if it fits in with your lifestyle as a working a mom from home, that's amazing. And that is the ideal situation that you could pursue your dreams and goals alongside raising your kids, you know. But that's just not always the opportunity or not always the case for people and often most people, I want to say. So, yeah, continuing to be able to, con- to, to go after your dreams and goals is such a wonderful, wonderful gift. Next, you get to do your own life as well as help another life. Yes, you like that kind of ties into last one, but you get to go and grab a coffee by yourself because your kids are being taken care of. You get to run a few errands before or after work or on your lunch break without anybody but yourself to worry about because you're going in and out of places without a baby because they're being watched. You know, you get to be at work without taking care of somebody else but just doing what you're supposed to be doing. I mean, those are simple yet amazing gifts that you don't have to take care of a baby while you're doing that. But you get to live your own life. You want to go to lunch at lunchtime with friends without a baby? You go, girl, because someone else is watching your baby. And that's such a blessing, like such a gift to not have to have a baby with you at all times, you know? You don't you don't realize this until you have a baby. But yeah. Such a cool thing. Next. This is just a little one. Okay, wait, before I go on to the next one, I had to change my microphone. I hope that this isn't just the worst quality ever. And I hope you can understand everything that I'm saying. Okay, next. You get to be with adults all day. Man, it sounds so funny if you don't have kids right now. But if you do have kids, you understand. It's so awesome. Like, being around somebody that can't, cannot communicate with words, but only with grunts and squeals and cries and laughs. And then you get to be around somebody all day that actually understands you and can speak back. Girl, that's living. To have conversation all day, like something funny happens and you're not the only one laughing. Or they're not just giving you a sympathy laugh because you're laughing and they just want to laugh. Or maybe they are giving you a sympathy laugh because they don't like you. Or maybe they do like you or whatever. But you get what I'm saying. So being able to be around other adults is nothing short of a miracle being a mom. It's pretty legit. I got my hot chocolate I'm drinking tonight. All right, so next. You get to be in a different environment. Whoa, this one is awesome. I am like such a 
a big environment person. Like, I don't know if you're like me, but the dishes have to be done. The floor has to be swept and mopped and picked up and all the laundry done. Like, everything has to be in its place for me to, like, be able to sit down and do my work or to be able to like edit a video or you know record this podcast like things have to be in order relatively in order because like I have to have like the good fireside smell like around the campfire smells going in the house and um you know my drink my matcha tea or my uh, hot chocolate. See, I have hot chocolate tonight. And, I mean, there just has to be a good vibe going on. And and I just, I need a vibe. I don't know why. I don't know if it's a personality thing. I don't know if you're like me. But, like, I need to have a vibe. Like, I want to be cozy. Like, I before I could record this podcast, I had to get cozy. I had to rinse off because we were running around at the lake and campfire and you know campgrounds and then I had to like put the baby down and I had to shower get cozy brush my teeth and not brush my teeth but take my contacts out just get cozy and have the smells going you know and then sit on the couch and chill because I want to be comfy I want to be cozy I want to chit chat you know like You're sitting on the couch with me. I'm not going to have a messy house. I'm not going to. I'm just not. I I can't enjoy the company. I can't enjoy the time. If someone is at my house, I want the house to be a vibe. Even if people aren't at my house, bro. Every morning, I get the house ready so I can work. And just be in the house. Even if I'm not working. Even if I'm just chilling on social media. I want the house to be a vibe. I want to chill. I want to be cozy. And I want it to be... Honestly, someplace that I actually want to be. Not like trying to like get out of the house. Honestly, I, I know I say that all the time. But like, I'll keep saying honestly. But there was a period of time... Sorry, I was just like super thirsty all of a sudden. It was a hot chocolate, man. So, um, there was just like a period of time this summer. And I was not really like putting our, keeping our house like put together, so to speak. And it was like messy, like legit messy and uh, not cozy, not comfy at all. It was downright, like, I had piles of laundry, bro, and I did not sweep or mop, and I did not want to go home, and then, therefore, I didn't want to, like, work, because I need, I need to be at home to do work, because the baby has to, like, be contained, you know? He has to be in a place where I don't have to worry about him and I can look and do other things. So our house was messy and I just did not want to be here. And it was like the worst. Like, seriously, it was so bad. It was really, really bad. Next. You get to have some you time. Yes, you're going to work. Yes, you are, you know, making that bread. But your car ride to work and your car ride home, you can make calls, you can chat, you don't have a baby or any kids, you can... On lunch, you can do whatever it is you want unless you have to run errands. You know, you can do things you want to do in between whatever you're doing at work. You know, you can go early and have an extra hour and just be or read a book or, 
you know, scroll on social media because that's just what you want to do, you know? I mean, that time is so freaking valuable. It's crazy. And I just relish in those moments. And if you don't have kids yet, just love it, enjoy it, relish in it for real. And your time is coming, you will have kids and then you won't get that time. Or you will, but not as often. Whereas it's crazy before you have kids, you have, and I I get what other moms would say, like, I don't know what I did with all the time. But honestly, I could fill up all the time. Even thinking about it now, like, I, I filled up all the time that I, you know, when I didn't have kids. And I loved it, you know, but I also love it now, you know. But anyways, next. You can have friends that are not moms. Or you could have work friends. So I like this point because often it feels like when you become a mom, like you just start to like really surround yourself with other moms. And when one of your like married friends without kids like get pregnant, it's like so much fun because they're like stepping into momhood and they're like preparing, you know, themselves and they're making this transition from like just a person, married person to like a married person with a baby. And it's such a crazy transition. It seriously is like it doesn't feel like it would be or but it is like your entire world is changing everything about it and in the best way but you get to have friends that are not moms and I love that I love having friends that are not moms that is the coolest thing like having single friends that are single and not dating anyone and then having friends that are you know single but dating somebody not married and then having just married friends that are just married no kids so much fun just having like all of the above I do realize that my friends that are single and or married without kids there is an element that changes between your friendship if you were friends before single and or just married like the element of what you were before is completely different now and where you didn't you could just fully pay attention to this your friend you can't when you get together because you're either taking care of a baby unless you have somebody watching your baby which is usually what you're doing when you're working so anyways but The dynamic does change when you do have the baby with them and you're together with them. But if you're, like, meeting your friend for lunch or all your friends at work that are, like, not moms, it's so fun because you get to see them in their walk of life and their life is so different than yours. But it's so cool because you kind of, like doing life with somebody in a completely different stage of life than you and I really love that it just makes life so much more fun and spicy and interesting and you gotta have it you just gotta have friends that are not moms friends that are single and friends that are dating people and friends that are married you know just get keep it all like keep the melting pot melted you know like just mix it all in together and it makes things so much fun you know and they get to peek into your life and experience your 
husband and child and it just makes life fun you know so having friends that are not moms is just so interesting because there's so many things going on in their life that would never happen in your life as a mom you know what I mean and so and vice versa they would never experience some things because they don't have a kid or married or maybe they are just married and not a kid you know what I mean they're just not in it with a kid so their life is very very different it's like a million yawn podcast is only 9 30 people next you get to be out in the world and out by yourself and no one to care for but you this is such an awesome one and it's such a big pro to being like a working mom because you i it kind of overlapped some of the other things i mentioned but honestly only having to care for yourself in that moment because you know your baby's safe is such a sweet fun thing you can do things like 10 times faster you know i don't know in a way you just feel free i would i would think you know because you're you it's like you get to turn off mom for a period And you get to just be you, original you, like not mom you, you know, you'll always be married, but you're not probably with your spouse. You're just you. You get to like get the coffee you want and you get to, you know, maybe you get your nails done with no baby in your hands, you know, so you're just maybe going to work and you're jamming out maybe loud, louder than you normally would because you have the baby in the car and you can't jam out to like your original music and maybe you're only listening to like the only one like sesame street song that soothes the baby over and over again and now you get to actually listen to like blink 182 i don't know i just made that up but like you know what i mean like your favorite music it's not my favorite music but i just made that up so for comical effect you know Because who even listens to Blink-182? And it's not bad if you love it. Because it's good. But it's not my favorite. So, there's that. Next. You get to go get a coffee and or shop alone. I kind of already mentioned that. So, I'm not going to talk too much about that. But, all in all... (sighs) How many times I've reiterated it, not having a baby with you is so awesome. If you're usually having a baby with you. Yeah. Um, You can meet with friends we wouldn't normally get to because you're focused on the baby. And even if you don't, because you're a working mom, someone's probably taking care of your baby. So, someone else... So that means when you meet with friends, you just paying attention to your friend. And that is a sweet spot. And you just don't get that if you are staying home and working from home or if you are a stay-at-home mom. I mean, that's what I meant, stay-at-home mom. You know, you just don't get that because you have to bring your baby with you almost always. You know, so sweet spot right there. And I kind of already, I'm kind of circling back with the end of this pros, is you get to have a break from the kids. And I think for a lot of women, this is super necessary because it can start to drive you crazy, especially when you are first becoming a mom. Like, you used to have all this free time and now you have like little to none especially when they're a newborn you have like no free time you can't like leave the house because your only free time is when they're napping you know what i mean and you don't want to break their schedule because then they're going to be super crabby when you try to go put, lay them down at the end of the day and then they'll take forever to go to sleep so so you like never really get to leave the house for the first few years of life or a year but you do you can you just don't really want to go too far 
I mean, and when I say you don't want to, I mean, like, I didn't want to, which, yeah. Okay. I'm going to now do working mom cons. Okay. So. Someone else sees your kids just as much, if not more, than you do. And it's as if someone else is raising your kids in a way. And that is so true. That make that alone, like, trumps almost all pros to anything for me. Because someone else raising your child and... Hopefully you would have pick somebody that has your same principles and values and morals and ideals, you know, and hopefully you would take the time to do research and not just do the the quickest, you know, easiest, cheapest price because having your baby like changed every few hours and your baby like taking care of well is more than worth any price tag and then also the principles and values and morals i mean this person is most is more than likely raising your kids in a way because they see them more than you do because yeah they're technically at home with you more than this person but if you let's think about it if you get home at if you get off work at 5 or 6 hopefully you live in a close area if you don't you have to drive you know 30 minutes you know to to get home you know maybe anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour with any stops or any groceries or anything you have to do to get home by the time you get home it's time for dinner and then shortly after that they have homework or whatever and then it's time for bed so it's like you're just doing all these things, busy, busy, busy work, and then is there time for play if they go to bed at 7.38? Maybe, maybe not. So that con is such a big con. It For me, that one con is worth 10 to 20 cons. So many cons. We're all wrapped up into one big con. Like, it is monumentally a con that really impacts my decision of what I would do. I want to be the one to raise our kids. I and my husband, I don't want someone else raising them. You know? And if you don't have a choice, you don't have a choice. But that big of a con really really is such a big one next you might miss your kids while at work this just thinking about it really makes me miss my baby like I can't imagine being away from my baby for an hour like even when I go for a run for 30 minutes or lift and Caleb watches him, I come back and I have like crazy baby fever and I just want to be by him and I want to snuggle him. And even like he goes to bed at 730 and I will get to just like do what I want, like work if I haven't worked all day. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Or, like, edit a video, or, like, right now I'm making this podcast, like, or clean the house, or make dinner. Oftentimes, Caleb and I won't be able to make dinner until after he's asleep, which we're going to have to change that when he's older. But, like, you know, I'll have all this time from, like, 7.30 to, like, 10 or 11, and sometimes we'll stay up later and just hang out together, but... Regardless, I am so ready to, like, see him when it's, 
like only like maybe three hours or a couple hours and it's I just haven't been by him because I'm constantly by him so I cannot imagine being away for eight hours at a time I just I just can't um but then again I feel like there's so many people that they it's okay like it's not a big deal they know that their baby's safe and yeah they probably miss their baby but you know everybody's different and you know that time people need more time maybe like for a break or you know and I just think everybody's different and I love that so many people are so different and anyways it's good you might well that I mean you might miss them so I mean it's good that everybody is so different you know okay next you might only get to see them at night times or dark times of the day, like in the morning when it's dark and at night when it's dark. Uh, I remember growing up in Minnesota and there is a period where we would only see our dad at these times in the morning and at night when it gets dark in the winter. And for me, I just feel like that's so sad because you want to go outside and play and you want to watch the sun come up. And if it's winter, you won't really get to watch the sun come up. You already have to be at work. And maybe you want to go outside and play with your child, but you can't because it's dark, you know. And I just think that's such a precious time. But I mean, yes, you can always play inside, but there's just something about throwing a ball around, you know, or being out at the pool or going for a walk or looking at animals, you know, like just things outside are so much fun. And for Everest specifically, he gets so tired when we do things outside. So and he's so stimu there's so much stimulation so it gets him super tired so i can't imagine not being able to do that kind of thing because it's so helpful oh, when putting him down for the night so i just feel like that's a really sad thing to only get to see them at night times or dark times and not get to be outside You know, um, it might not bother some. That might not be a big deal because just being inside is being inside. And um, if it's winter, you might not want to be outside anyway, so it really wouldn't matter. But, I mean, still being in the house and it being morning or daytime or light in the house is always really nice. So, next. Next. You could miss a lot of firsts, like, or, like, the, like their first word or their first walk or their first crawl or new things that they're learning or things that they learn or do that, like, completely melt your heart. Now, I know that a remedy for this is that there are daycares today that record things. And, like, I know that there are daycares that you can see your baby at any time on the video. Like, they have them on video. And you can see them playing. Um, And... They will record, like, if it's a first of something, they will record it for you. And that is awesome. But I just, when I think about it, like, if you happen to even have your camera out, yeah, it's one thing to have it on, like, a big camera, but then to have it recorded 
where you can keep it. It's like, would you actually have your camera out at the exact time they just happened to walk? I don't know. I mean, are you willing to take that chance when they only have one first of anything? Yeah, they will have many, you know, walks and many talks and all these things. But I don't know. For your first baby, at least, it's like you kind of want to be there for their first things. I don't know. Maybe that's just me, but, like, oh, I uh, don't know what I would do if I couldn't be there for his first words or his first walk or his first crawl or the first time he sat up or rolled over. I mean, oh, it would break my heart. Anyway, that would be a huge con in my book, not being able to see, like, any first. And also, like, the daycare or your other family member knowing the baby's tendencies or, like, you not being able to get the baby down for a nap because you don't know what exactly the baby likes because you are not there during the day you're only at night you know or in the morning when they're waking up you're not there throughout their entire day you know so uh that's hard you know or like Caleb left for four days and all of a sudden Everest is like over the pacifier Here I am worrying, and I was just worrying about, like, oh, how are we going to get him to get off the pacifier when he just doesn't want it? Like, within four days, he's over it, bro. Like, he does not want the pacifier. He does not want it at all. He won't put it in his mouth. Hardly, if you put it in his mouth, he'll spit it right back out or throw it. And he started doing all these, like, starting these little games Or he wants to, like, he'll, like, open his mouth, like, to to roar, kind of like a lion. And then he, we were playing this game where I would, like, tickle his neck and roll around and uh, kind of, like, flip him down a little bit so he's halfway upside down, you know, and then... stand him back up and he would make that growling roar sound and then I would come and tickle him and tickle his neck and so it was like a game and we would do it over and over we did it for like 10 minutes one day but like Caleb was gone for four days and he missed that and now he always does that little roar thing to play that game and only I know it and so it's like well I, I told Caleb about it But, so he does it now, but, like, within four days, that whole thing transpired, and now Everest just loves to do that. And he, like, will eat food, and after, like, eating something, he'll go, ah, like, so cute, and I would have missed that within four days, and so it's just crazy, like how much changes so fast you know it is cool that daycares record things like that though I don't know how much and I'm gonna guess that that's really expensive to be taking care of every single child like that you know so no but it sounds a little intense All right, next. I kind of mentioned this. You might not know what works for them to get them to sleep or calm them or what works. Yeah, I kind of already said that, so I'm going to skip that. That just kind of came out. Um, You might sometimes want to be home, but you have to work. So this is like a real major con because... You're really wanting to be there with them, but you have to work. And when you have a job, it's not like you could just... 
say you didn't want to work that day just because you want to be with your baby. Like, it just doesn't work that way. You're probably going to be out of a job, like, ASAP. So, wanting to be home, but you can't, is a real, real thing. And I don't blame you. I would, too. Okay. I am going to start on the stay-at-home pros. Okay, number one. You get to... I'm back on the microphone now. I'm super excited about this. I took a few breaks because I was getting so sleepy, but I'm awake now. Like... I'm going to continue to yawn because my body is, like, screaming at me saying go to freaking bed. But, you know what? I am not. I refuse. Um, okay. So, stay-at-home pros. Number one. This is, like, my number one, number one, number one pro for this. You get to raise your own kids. I mean, what is better than that? It sounds like such a funny thing to say. Of course, you get to raise your own kids when you work as well. But just such a special bonus of being home all day, every day, is you get to really, really instill your values And no one else can really do that as much as you because you are their primary number one influence. Nobody else has as much influence on them in their very early beginning stages as you because you are the one with them 24-7. You're their hero. You're their favorite. They look to, to you for everything. And they're relying on you. And so you get to write the story and paint the world with bright, crazy, amazing colors and teach them about the things you want to teach them about, you know, and give them the option to hear your values and your principles and your morals and your ideals you know what is better than that honestly honestly nothing nothing there's nothing better than that okay next you get to take care of your own home I think working and being out and about for eight hours at a time or nine or ten if you live far away from home uh Your house can tend to start to slip away from being up in shape and taken care of and everything being cleaned up. And But when you are at home, you're a stay-at-home mom, you can do laundry in between naps. Or or while, you know, put the baby in in a safe area and you can do laundry while they're sitting next to you or hanging onto your leg or... Just playing in the same room or the next room next to you or whatever. Put a monitor on them and then do laundry and put it away or do dishes or have your house like kept up and in tip top shape is such a glorious thing. And you can do that when you're home and the baby's taking a nap and you're there ready for anything but you get to keep your house clean and um, tidy just how you like it you know or however you like it even if you like it messy you can uh, have the option to clean or do anything else you know I think the value of that is unprecedented so I don't know if I used that word correctly right there so um, you get to just be and be home I think this is such a wonderful thing because you are not at like the demands and fingertips of your boss or someone else but you are 
at home. You get to just be when you're not, like, even if you're just taking care of your little baby or your kids and you just want to sit and take a breather. I mean, I don't know if you really can with if you have, like, four kids, but maybe if they have a nap time, you know, and they happen to all sync up, yes, you can have a breather and, you know, or even... You could have a breather if your littlest kids are asleep and your bigger kids are outside or are playing somewhere that is in a different room. You know? I mean, that's a surefire win right there. So, I mean, it's pretty good. So, all right, next. Whoa. You can go out and do things with your kids. This is really awesome because you can take them to do educational things like go to the museum or to a, just to a park. You can just be with your kids and do life with your kids. Go, you know, go places and you get to do it with your child. Yes, you have to bring your child with, but you can still, like, go do things. Whereas if you're at work, you're just at work. And oftentimes, jobs don't allow you to go get whatever XYZ food. So, being able to go get and do whatever, mail something at the post office, you know, you can... All right, I'm falling asleep. I will continue this. Next, you can, you have the option to homeschool your kids. And this I absolutely adore. I love the option to homeschool our kids so that we're not getting like a bunch of like weird stuff being taught to our student, to my kids. You know, I mean, you know, with today, who knows what's being taught to the kids? And they don't tell the parents. They just teach without telling. So having the having the option to, I think, homeschool your kids is such a great option and a necessary I think it's really necessary to have the option, the choice. Would you like to or would you not? And maybe it's not necessary, but for me and our principles and our values in our family, it is. When you're homeschooling, you can teach them. If you have Christian values, you could be teaching them having time, like just reading the word. I mean... And that could be, there could be curriculum that goes along with, you know, that sort of Bible study type thing, which would be cool. But also us just having like designated time to be with the Lord and having that be part of our curriculum. And uh, Getting done by, like, 10 in the morning, if we start at, like, 7, you know, being done at 10 a.m. is such a cool thing because then we can go and do things. Or they can just be for the rest of the day or go play, you know. And I just think, I mean, they would have the option to go do sports or social activities as well so they're not missing out on anything like that and when you have a strong community they're going to be getting having friends outside of they don't need to be in school to have friends you know um you as a parent having a strong community of like-minded individuals brings the option for those kids those people's kids to for your kids to be friends with because you already have the same mindset and you already have the same thought process and desire and principles and values and morals. So 
it's easy to then let your kids be around their kids because you already know that they believe the same things and that they want the same things for their kids. So you're not going to have anything weird going on. And I just, that is just such a sweet spot and so special. You get to have home-cooked meals throughout the day. Sometimes if you are a working mom, you might have to go to a cafeteria and pay money, you know, or go to breakfast or um, sometimes, you know, you don't have time to cook at the end of the day, so you just go get fast food. You know, and sometimes being at home all day, you don't have that option as well. I understand this, depending on how many kids you have and depending on, but depending on what's going on in your life at that time which is fine, but it might be less often since you're already at home. What I like to do is I like to start preparing for dinner if I know Caleb's not gonna be home at dinner time or like um, during dinner time when I need to cook and I had when Everest was like super new, like only three months and like kind of in that needy stage where he needs to be held. He's not quite playing, but he's not quite sleeping all the time. He kind of just wants to be held all the time and you just simply can't because you have to do like other things like cook and stuff. Well, during that time, I like to prepare ahead of time. So I will cut up all the veggies and all the things that I need to do ahead of time, prepare the meal. Sometimes I even make the whole meal and then at dinner time I just warm it up. I'll make it that day, that morning, and then we'll just heat it up. Oftentimes that's not the case. Oftentimes I will prepare everything that needs to be done. And then when it comes time to make the meal, I just put it all together, you know, type of deal. If it's a hot dish or um, stir fry or meat, whatever it is, you know, I, um, tonight we're making curry and Caleb is going to be busy. He has some meetings throughout the day. So I prepared the onions and um, I cooked up some, I'm, we're gonna saute some green peppers and I'm gonna boil some beets and then um, like steam some beets and then we're gonna have like a curry, like a curry masala, like a beef curry. So I have prepared pretty much everything that needs to be prepared. I cut up the onions and the beets and the green peppers and the beef is all ready to go. Everything else is ready to go. And it's a simple recipe but and the seasonings and everything but all i need to do now is just put it all together in the time it needs to be added so yeah there's still like some sauteing and boiling and or like steaming and stuff going on but it won't take as long once i put it like start putting it all together like i just need to steam the stuff together you know and um, it really won't take that long. Oh, sorry, I was a little distracted there for a second. But yeah, it just won't take as long as if you're needing to... Oh, sorry about that. If you're needing to prepare and cook everything, cut everything, all of that. Whereas right now, all I have to do is put it all together. So, I mean, I just find that that works really well when you're kind of in a hurry but you don't have much time but you want to have a home-cooked meal and I just find that home-cooked meals help those save you money and the more kids you have I think you need to have more home-cooked meals than not my parents hardly we never went out to eat like hardly ever because we just had so many kids you know and it just doesn't work so home-cooked meals baby and they're more healthy and they save you money okay you don't have a boss. I love this. You get to plan how your day is going to go because you don't have somebody over you telling you how to do your day and what you have to do, when you have to do it, how you have to do it. You just get to run your own day with your family. And if you're homeschooling, you can choose when you want to do that, when you cook your meals, everything. When you go out to the post office and run, go get groceries, maybe, maybe one morning, you know, you normally do homeschool and then you go to the post office and 
return a few things and then you go grocery shopping but maybe something is going to happen at noon where you have to have like a doctor's appointment or something so you don't really have time to go grocery shopping so you need to like go grocery shopping in the morning and then do homeschool in the afternoon more so like starting at 10 11 you know and then you have a doctor's appointment and then after the doctor's appointment you don't have time to go grocery shopping but you already did it so you just go straight home and start cooking or you know what i mean or you just have like a pot roast or like a soup or something in the crock pot or the instapot whatever you use i realized as soon as i said crock pot that nobody uses a crock pot hardly at all except grandmas and me and so even grandmas use Instapots, and I just will use a crock pot because I feel like in the summer we don't cook crock potty things, Instapotty things. We just mostly do them in the winter. We'll do a lot of Instapot, crock pot type things. Anywho, I love that you get to make your own schedule and do what you want, when you want, how you want, and that is such a blessing. Okay, next. Um, You get to play with your kids and you aren't tired from work. I feel like if if you work all day, you get up early, early in the morning, like an hour before you have to go to work, to get the kids out the door, get them to daycare or to a family member's house. Then you spend eight to nine to ten hours at your job, you know, taking orders from other people. And you're stressed and meeting deadlines. And then you come home. All you want to do is relax. You're not wanting to get on the floor and wrestle around with your kids and play. And and maybe you are because you miss them so much. But only for so long. Then you're ready to relax. But to your kids, they missed you and they haven't seen you all day. And you haven't seen them, but they want to play. And they want to play not just for like five minutes, but for like an hour, two hours. You know, they want to play with you and be with you. And and, and the last thing you want to do is not be able to because you're too tired from work. You know, and maybe that's just the reality. But... If you have the option, I just feel like that's such a good thing to be able to, throughout your day, get on the floor and play with them and wrestle and let them climb on you and, you know, play with the stuffed animals and make up little games. And I just feel it's so crucial for their development and for your relationship and for bonding. Yeah. Okay. I kind of touched on this with the no boss thing, but you get to make your own schedule. I love that because I'm kind of reiterating that, but it gives you so much freedom in your day. I feel like when it's time for us to homeschool, um, like for me right now, well, when it comes to homeschool, we can decide when, and I feel like we'll often do it in the morning just because everybody's fresh and new and just woke up and raring to go and the most energy. But by the day it goes on, people are getting cranky and crabby and tired and ready for naps and they're just not at their best. You know what I mean? And I'm not at my best. So obviously I'm going to probably lose patience at some point, you know, and hopefully not though, but you never know. I mean, I just a better person in the morning. I just feel like I have more energy and more stuff to say and I can think of things clearer when I have you know starting in the morning so okay but right now making my own schedule is so awesome because I do work from home and I'm going to talk about this later I am able to clean the house and prepare the house a little bit for him like sweep the floors and mop so he doesn't eat everything And if I didn't do dishes the night before, I can do them right away in the morning and vacuum and then, 
you know, I can do the morning chores in the morning or, and then it's time for him to nap so that I can't do anything. So that I have to like put him down and then, okay, now he's asleep so I can do a workout, you know, or go for a walk. And then, oh, he's up by the time I'm done. So then now we're playing again and maybe I can do some work then. Maybe I can't, maybe he's extra teething and needy right now, which he is. So then I have to be with him and comfort him, you know, and I have to pay attention. So we're making food maybe and eating. So it's like not every day is the same, but you get to make your own schedule when you're home. And I truly value this. There's nothing I would want more, honestly. Yeah, seriously, it's so awesome. Okay. You can go visit your family whenever. And yes, obviously that's kind of an overstatement because if it works out with your husband or if you have the car or, you know, whatever, like you would probably want your spouse to come with too. But but I will go visit Caleb's family throughout the day, like several times a week, just like go and visit them. They live really close. You know, or I go and visit my family. I'll drive several hours with Everest to go visit family because you have the time and you're not at work. I mean, having that flexibility and your kids being able to know grandparents and cousins and aunties and uncles is priceless. Heck, I mean, we used to live... 16 hours away and weren't able to do that and who knows how long we'll be able to like do this but while we can we have the ability to go meet them and see them and visit and that is a blessing and something we will not take it for granted that is for sure okay next you can wake up when you want and take naps throughout the day I'm really looking forward to this once I'm pregnant because I you can technically wake up when you want because if you put him to bed later he's gonna wake up later this might not work for older kids because you don't they go to bed they just go to bed you know but with Everest and his age I'm still putting him to sleep he doesn't really know how to put himself to sleep yet So, if I choose to put him to bed at 9 or 10, then he, I don't think he would stay up till 10, um, but then he would wake up around 9 or 10 in the morning, and this is really awesome. Or, and I think just the having the nap option is such a sweet deal. Seriously, seriously, it is. Because... When we are pregnant, next time we're pregnant, I'm going to absolutely need to take naps with him. Absolutely. And right now, I'll be able to because I only have one child. And I'll just take a nap when he goes down. I'll just lay next to him, you know? Bro, I'm back on the mic. It's awesome. I'm hoping it's not too big of a difference and at the same time it's so good anyways okay next oh wait I think I just said the beginning of something I had to put the baby down I'm sorry uh I think I was talking about when you wake up and when you want to take naps throughout the day. And I really agree with this. I love this. And I think I was talking about when I was pre- when I, we, when we get pregnant, this is going to be so crucial for me. I don't know if I'll be able to do it in the next pregnancies, but at least with this one kid. It works. It will work. 
and I can just nap with him. And thing is, he was he sometimes can take three naps a day, and sometimes he's only good with two. So I might only need one nap a day, like two hours. Thing is, if it gets cut short because he wakes up, that might not be so good. But waking up when you want and taking naps throughout the day is such a plus. You cannot do that if you're working. I guess you could take a lunch, a nap on your lunch break, but you probably want to eat. So then you're torn. Unless you can eat at your desk while working, and then you could nap on your break on your lunch. I mean, that works. All right. Go to bed when you want. I think I already said that as well. Um, right now, I pretty much go to bed whenever I want. I sometimes try to push it past 10, and I have most this year. You know, I've pushed it to midnight or 1 a.m. And it's not like I really pay for it. You know, you feel like you're going to pay, have to pay for staying up so late, but that's just not really the case. For me, for some reason, granted, I do drink like a cup of coffee or some sort of sugar-free energy drink every day to keep the headaches away, <laughs> you know, caffeine headaches. So there is that. I do supplement energy. I used to have just pure, you know, no ener no caffeine it was completely pure, my own energy, you know. Okay, so there was wind, and now there's no wind. I was kind of like, I'm just going to warn you, there might be some wind, but I really want to sit outside. I just feel like it's so much nicer to be looking at trees and rocks and shrubbery and, you know, rocks and trees and pine trees and stuff, instead of a wall or a TV you know or a bunch of toys I just would rather be outside and plain and simple you know so yeah I do stay up late often because oftentimes I'm really wanting to spend time with Caleb and Caleb sometimes comes home at 11 because he works sometimes 3 to 11 and and sometimes he's done at 3 you know but if he is done at 11, you know, I often will wait up and, you know, I'm, I'm often working if I haven't had a chance to work while Everest is sleeping. Or sometimes I'm recording a podcast for y'all or sometimes I'm editing a video and I just haven't had time throughout the day. Sometimes I just like to make reels just for fun, you know. They are such a fun, random thing on social media, especially when I don't have TikTok. And I love TikTok, but I just don't have it because, well, there's a lot of reasons and I'm not gonna get into it. But yeah, I would, um, just having like me time. Often I'm working because I haven't had it like finished, but I try to work in the morning. I think that just needs to be more of a goal but in the afternoon I just like to stay up and it's kind of like it feels like recess in a way because the baby's asleep and there's nothing to do but whatever I want unless I have work and it's just the best thing your day can be as different as you want each day I love this and I kind of this is kind of a reiteration of the last couple of things but I love that your day can be so different and and I think it's so important to make sure that it's different because oftentimes when you are at home day after day after day it can feel like there is no variety but honestly, if I were to go and write down everything that I do each day, so many impromptu things happen. Like just yesterday, it was so fun. We had no plans. I was just caught up with work and 
Everest and I had gone for a walk in the morning and I started this podcast and then halfway throughout the day someone called and was like do you want to go to this waterfall and I was like sure like of course so we packed and it was there's a little hike connected to it a little hike and we got ready and headed out we packed like one of those water packs I honestly didn't know I knew it was called like something falls but I didn't know it was actually like a watering hole like a like a little watering hole that you could swim in so we hiked there and it took maybe 20 minutes to hike there not that long and then we got there and it wasn't it was like dried up this must be like dried up season and um the little the waterfall that was supposed to be there was like a tiny trickle and it was kind of like algae filled so we ended up going to a different lake we hung out there for a little bit because it took 20 minutes to walk there so we took a break and just kind of hung out one of our friends like climbed scaled all the rocks and stuff and and then um and then we went to a lake and we hung out there for another hour and a bunch of people swam and uh, Everest got to play in the water and we had snacks and we just hung out for like an hour or maybe two and watched the sunset, took lots of pictures. It was a blast. And there were like 10 girls with us and that was so impromptu and that has been happening a lot. And then after that, we came home, we all got changed and showered and then we went to this like campgrounds and it's like beautiful canvas like tents and they have like a beautiful common area and they have live music and campfires and we got burgers and drinks and it was just so much fun hot chocolate and roast marshmallows around the fire and it was so much fun but that was completely impromptu now if you don't live in a community that might not happen as much but if you have a community and they just that kind of thing will happen all the time and that took up like our whole day but it was so much fun and it was completely impromptu so and and that campgrounds is such a vibe like super hippie urban like trendy cutie 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 place like yes and amen vibes for days and so so cute anyways so I love that and that was I was open to that and at first I wasn't going to do that because I'm like I have to keep up with work because I had just gotten caught up with work but why and and also I wanted to make a YouTube video because I haven't in two weeks and I really wanted to make this particular podcast and I was really excited about sharing and talking about this whole subject with you but I was flexible and I did that whole thing and really that made our day and I was like I could do this same thing over and over again and it was so much fun just but the variety of it just lit up our day and it was such a blast so keep things your day can be as different as you want each and every day and I love that about being home okay you can get errands done throughout the day instead of at the end or beginning of your day this is such a blessing when you are a stay-at-home mom because you can like do errands in the middle of the day so that when your spouse comes home you just get to hang out with your spouse i think for a long time when the baby was brand new i would want i didn't really want to go anywhere unless caleb was with me because bringing the baby anywhere was like this huge deal for me but i'm really getting used to it now so um i'm okay doing these kind of like treks and sometimes I'll have Caleb's mom come with like grandma come with um but I am open to doing these things on our own so that when Caleb comes home we just get to be 
and that is a blessing like you can get all the chores done and do things in between and get out and about and make things happen and then your family just gets to just relax together but you don't get to do that when you're working because you're at work all day and maybe you can do something on your lunch but oftentimes if you need dry cleaning or to return something at the post office you can't do that until after work or if you need like the dmv type of stuff oh nightmare but if you're working from if you are at home stay home mom you can do it at any time when people are at work you can do it okay next Okay, this one is awesome. You get so much freedom. And I think having that level of freedom lets you just do nothing all day. And then you can completely change it up and spend the day at the pool the next day. Or just get your own little pool out and spend the whole afternoon in the pool. You know, or even if you had plans and then they fall through with other people you can still make your own plans work. And I can take walks throughout the entire day. And I just think I really wanted to make a goal of walking five miles a day, like when I was pregnant. And we can do that. Today we only got in one mile because Everest was, I was, we were trying to get him down for a nap and we think he's going through a growth spurt and he was taking really long naps and he was having a hard time going actually down when we thought he should go down. Anyways, it's a whole story, but the opportunity is there and the availability is there which is what counts and we've had so many impromptu like go to grandma's for dinner or we just want to go play bags like tonight we're having a uh, bag tournament like um like cornhole bags with Caleb's family and I'm so excited about it and it was totally impromptu just today so I mean, you can't go wrong with that level of freedom. Granted, you have to be in by 7.30 for bed. Although, I think Everest will sleep a little bit later tonight because he only started his nap at 4.30, meaning he probably won't get up till 5.30. So, he probably won't go down till. well, he's on a growth spurt, so he might still go to bed at 7.30. Anyways, you still get freedom throughout your day, day, you know. Um, you get breaks. Like, a pro is like, you get breaks during his naps. His naps are times for just you. And you may or may not get that long of breaks, like if you're at work. Sometimes the breaks are only 30 minutes. Sometimes the breaks are two and a half hours, anywhere in between. And that is a time I usually often use for cleaning or work. Sometimes I will prioritize like a YouTube video or a podcast if I haven't done one in a super long time, which I haven't done a YouTube. So that kind of needs to be the priority tonight. Um, yeah. But right now Everest is napping and I am talking to you. And just a little bit ago, while he was awake, I was talking to you as you heard him. But it doesn't always work as well. So I definitely take these opportunities while he's napping to be chit-chatting with you and um, get different. Mostly, it's just work or podcasts or videos or cleaning. These are like the top four things that I use the naps for. I have been known to just sit and be on social media as well. Even when I have like pressing needs with work or other videos or podcasts, but cause sometimes you just need a break. All right. Yeah. So I kind of already mentioned this, but it wasn't directly, but you can pre prepare meals. Oh, sorry. A bug flew in my face. You can prepare meals and this I really I think you can do this well if you were working as well but you can prepare multiple meals and they can be fresh that day I feel like if you're a working mom 
you might have to meal prep for the week but if you are a work from home mom or you are a stay at home mom you can prepare in the morning and then actually make the meal at night like cut everything up like I mentioned earlier I feel like this is such a huge thing and it's so helpful especially if you're like out and about throughout the day and like we were when we went hiking and to the lake and stuff but we were able then I could prepare it in the morning put everything back in the fridge and then when it's time to cook put it all together and bing bang boom bam okay I'm good at saying that I love this one. You can be home when your spouse gets home. Like, you can be ready. Like, the food on the table. Like, my mom used to do this growing up. Food was just getting on the table as dad was coming home. We were setting the table. And you can be waiting for him or her when you come home. And I I guess if you're a stay-at-home mom, then if you're waiting. You're waiting for your spouse, your husband. So, like... I just think that's such a sweet image. It's just a sweet aroma, a sweet fragrance to your relationship. Your husband's had a long day, worked so hard to provide for your family, and you, they are coming home and you have food on the table. You're ready to go. He's probably starving. I know my dad always was growing up. And so you have food ready and raring to go, and he just has to wash up rinse off and you know sorry I scraped my nails on the microphone and sit down you know I love that I really truly love that it's so beautiful I know it kind of sounds old fashioned in a way but I really love it that image and I think it's so sweet I don't know it's just me next you can play outside at the best time of the day or all day and you can enjoy the weather together you know if you're at work and you know it's anywhere from 10 to 4 p.m. is like the best time of day often and oftentimes people that are working are looking out their windows just it's such a beautiful day and they're stuck inside and and so if you're a stay-at-home mom or a work from home mom you have the opportunity to go outside at any time of the day and you can play for an hour and then go inside and have a nap for an hour and then you can go back outside and set the pool up for a couple hours and then come back in and nap and then you can go back out and go for a walk and visit people so I just feel like that is literally the best of both worlds. It's so sweet, so endearing. Your kids get to, like, be with friends and hang out and hang out with you. And and also, you get to enjoy the weather. And when it's nice out, you get to enjoy it with your friends if you're in a community. I just always plan to always be in a community. And if not, you can always make community. But I just really want to make community everywhere I go. I just feel like it's so crucial, especially if you're a mom and you're a stay-at-home mom. It's essential that you have a good, believing community that believes in the same things as you. But enjoy you just get to be outside and yes it could be 60 degrees but you could have your sweater weather on your sweater and your your cutie pant like leggings and your cute like walking shoes and you can take pictures in the fall leaves with your kids and um like every day is a photo opportunity photo shoot opportunity i just relish this why do i love it so basic and yet I do not care I love it with a passion yeah anyways uh, you get to spend the best time together outside yeah sweet fragrance 
you can work out at any time of the day. And now I put in parentheses, nap time is mostly. If the baby's up already, I like to work out right away in the morning because I want to get the workout out of the way. And then I want to just take walks the rest of the day. But once I work out, I want to shower and be ready, do my makeup, look good, feel good. Even if I'm not leaving the house, I want to be ready for the day and I want to feel good, look good. Because, again, you never know what could happen in your day. You could end up forgetting about something and then you have to be meeting with like a million people, you know, going to a church group or whatever, whatever, whatever. And you got ready and you were prepared. You might end up going on a walk and it's beautiful and some trails with coffee and your kid in a walker and you find the cutest little brook and you just want to take pictures by it and voila, you look gorgeous because you got ready that morning. Just do it. It's so nice to feel good and to look good and put your clothes together even if you're a stay-at-home mom. I just think it's so awesome. Plus, you, if you make reels, you want to look cute. Hello. Um, anyways. But I say working out is awesome. You can do it at nap times. If you haven't done it right away in the morning, I often try to do it like I get up before the baby often. And then, well, now he's starting to get up at 5 and 6 because he's going to bed earlier. He was going to bed at like 8, 9, and then he was waking up at 8, 9 in the morning. But now he's going to bed at like 6, 7 and waking up at 6, 7. So that's about the time that I wake up anyways. And then I was lifting, but now he'll wake up at the same time as me. And then I won't get to work out because Caleb often sleeps because he works late. So I always have to do it at his first nap. And I feel like that's the best time for me personally is like right away because I don't want to do it as the day goes on. Excuse me. But you can work out at nap time. Your baby's nap time. Not your nap time. But yeah, you could work out during his nap time. and Or if he's awake or she's awake, you can do that. Those, those, there are those apps where you can like be holding the baby and do sit-ups and it adds an extra weight or like squats. You know, you can do the workouts holding the baby. So, so awesome. Or just go for walks holding the baby. If they're awake, there's things, there's, there's things you can do around it or put the baby in the jumper, you know, and do your workout. Depends on what age they may or may not like that, you know, but there is work around and a stay at home mom can be fit. Okay. Next, find your own unique outlet. You can find your own unique outlet. I think recently I was just telling Caleb that I really want to get into watercolors and I want to paint outside as the, as the weather gets cooler. Uh, to, we've had some 80 degree days, but it's one of the last few 80 degree days where we're winding down September and it's about to get cooler and I want to be doing watercolors outside you know, and have the jumper and the baby out here and uh, like a playpen or something and him just crawl around and I want a watercolor outside and I want to do acrylics. We actually had an acrylic set and we bought like 20 different canvases for last winter. But by the time we went to go do acrylics, we had like, we weren't able to find our acrylic paint set, which is so weird. We must have lost it in our move somewhere. So I'm going to actually get more acrylic paints and like paintbrushes and stuff for our winter because we both, Caleb said that he was really wanting to do acrylics with me and I'm so excited because I really want to do that as well. But I think I'm personally really interested in watercolors like as a relaxing thing to do like when the baby's napping or asleep at night. Or in the morning if I get up before him, which doesn't really happen as much anymore as I mentioned before. Plus, I like to keep the morning nap, like, exclusively for my workout. But I think watercolors is more of an afternoon relaxation type thing. So, 
yeah a creative outlet for me I have a few different outlets I've told you that I really want to get into watercolors we will be doing acrylics this winter I think we're gonna do some like this fall with like my brother-in-law and his girlfriend I think we're gonna do like some painting they don't even know this yet but we want to invite them to do like all four of us do like painting and stuff and I'm really really excited for it so I hope that works out um uh, but Caleb and I want to do it ourselves. But also, like, this podcast is a creative outlet for me where I look forward and I get motivated to, like, think of ideas and things to talk about. And um, I'm excited to put them out on social medias and share them with you. And I'm excited for you to hear them. And even if you're just in your car and you're super bored and, like, this is all you use it for, honestly, is, like, when you're bored, honestly, that's what podcasts are mostly people use them for anyways um but I just love that and I love to have like this creative outlet to share things when I don't like my husband is an introvert and I love that about him that's literally something I adore about him but like when he comes home like today he's had two or three meetings all day like his whole job today was just meetings in and out of meetings all day and the last thing he wants to do is come home and chit chat with me because he's been chit chatting with people for hours and hours on end all day. So for me, I've been alone all day. It's the exact opposite. So I get to come on here and chit chat with you and just talk away and talk about everything. And and same with like YouTube, like making that video and then editing it and putting my own spin on it and putting graphics and then putting it out to share it with you again is such a fun creative outlet for me and I think all moms need a creative self-expression some type of outlet it doesn't even have to be a self-expression it could be like reading a book but also no 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 that's not what I'm saying I'm sorry I got off on uh, a little tangent I was thinking about something else you need to have like a an outlet of some thing that if you're not working a not a working mom you need to have some type of outlet that gives you purpose that's what I'm trying to say I have a friend who's a mom and they are flipping houses and she also wants to like board horses and like um build that like the barrel horses or racing horses and and train them and then sell them to make money and so that is giving her a purpose and a goal it's something she's doing herself and I love that and I think that is a self a version of self-expression it is but it also is giving her drive and a purpose when she's not working and she's a stay-at-home mom and I think that that is so essential for stay-at-home moms because I think the tendency for stay-at-home moms is to start to feel like you have no purpose. And not necessarily all the time, but I think we have those days where it's like, I had this dream and this goal and this plan for my life and now I'm just raising kids. When in actuality, you are just raising your kids is a huge if not your purpose and but also it can be just not just raising kids but you can also have other things that you're doing and I think that that is such a, a crucial essential part of being a stay-at-home mom is having that outlet that that second kind of purpose like a like a like a backseat purpose and plan for your life and something that you're doing and and for me YouTube is that in the sense of I'm pushing towards something and I have a goal and you know and same with like this podcast it's just just an awesome outlet with I have goals in mind with this podcast and I have goals in mind with the YouTube channel and I think all moms need to find something you know, that will give them purpose and a drive and, um, yeah. 
maybe you're an author and you want to write a book. Um, my One of my friends was just saying how that the girl, that the lady that wrote Twilight was a stay-at-home mom and she had a dream and she wrote the Twilight book or whatever in her spare time as a stay-at-home mom. I mean, that's something you could do. That's awesome. I love that. And so something like that or like painting or like selling your paintings or like I'm talking like I'm not talking watercolors. Well, you could do watercolors, but I'm not talking about like the kind of watercolors. Mine was just for like creative expression and something to do that relaxes you. And yeah, but like if that's some, if you're like really good at it, it it could be like an outlet where you could have like a purpose. Like maybe you sell your artwork and you're that good. I mean, girl, do it. Um, okay, next. You can make other stay-at-home mom friends. I kind of touched on this already because about having a community, but you can have other stay-at-home mom friends. And um, and this way, you can have play dates with their kids at any time of the day. And you can um, meet up for coffee with your kids and go for a walk, you know, grab coffee and then go for a walk or go to a splash pad. And um, I think it's so essential and such a pro to have stay-at-home mom friends if you're a stay-at-home mom because A, that's your community or a part of it, and B, to have other like-minded like moms that want to be home for their kids and want to um, prioritize their kids in this way is so important especially since the work from the working moms have a such a big community at work and have people to talk to all day you need that community throughout your day so find other stay-at-home mom friends i feel like there's so much more i could talk about but i'm gonna move on um okay the last pro from being a stay-at-home mom is you that you can work from home and you can have the option to work from home I guess depending on your financial situation but this is what I do I work from home and I see it as such a blessing I'm able to bring in income while I'm home with my child and it is such a blessing to be able to still make income and be at home with with my little baby and if you can do it and like do something that you love like more than more than more power to you and that w- that is my dream and my goal to be able to have a job where I'm really fulfilling a dream and fulfilling something I'm excited about and pumped about and I'm not there yet but I do believe the Lord will provide a way for me to be able to make my dream come true and have an out like a like a job where I'm working from home and that is literally all I would want is to be able to work from home doing something that I love and be able to be with my family and seriously I need to start praying about that more that is for sure Okay, maybe you can pray for me for that. (laughs) I would love that. Okay, if you think about it. Anyways, okay, so staying at home cons. Okay, it could, you could get into a bad mundane routine. Now, I kind of touched on this earlier that it's important to not get into a boring mundane routine. And in some ways it can inevitably to some degree be this but if you have worked in a job prior to being a stay-at-home mom I think the the driving force for this is that every single day I'm so thankful that I get to be at home with my babies and and that I'm not 
working and not away from them. And you know what? Some some people, everybody's different. Some ladies really need to be and have that break each day, like being away from their kids. Not away from their kids, that's not the right wording, but like they need to be doing something else and not just taking care of kids. You know what I mean? Everybody is different and everybody is amazing and filled with purpose, you know? And so, but for me personally, I hated working a job for, for you know, oh, like, and that was before I had kids. And now that I have a kid, I've never had to be away from him even a day. And the drive to not get into a, a boring, stale, mundane, you know, routine drives me and um, just even a little walk in the day shakes things up you know or just calling a friend you haven't talked to in a while or a girl or a person in your community that you really want to hang out with that you haven't just go down and get a coffee you know it truly makes all the difference but I think it's very very vitally important that you um Maybe make a bucket list for like your summer or something or your winter, a winter bucket list. Ooh, that's what I'm going to do. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm going to make a winter bucket list and share it with you because we're approaching fall, winter. And maybe I'll make a fall bucket list, fall slash winter bucket list. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to share it with you. Anyways, so stay tuned. But... I think it's so important to make a list of things that you want to do for that season and then randomly pick, if you feel like it's getting stale or mundane, then go to that list and pick something out for that day. Even if it's just one thing, if you're feeling like, oh, today is just another boring day, go to the list, the the summer bucket list, the whatever. And go pick something that you would never normally go do and do it. Even if it's a little bit of a drive and you have to, you know, rent a kayak, do it. Because it will, you'll be so happy you did. The day will be amazing and you'll have done something fun with your kids. So, highly recommend. Don't get stuck in a bad mundane routine. Keep it spicy, keep it different. And if you have kids that are older, you probably have different like activities going on in the afternoons. So it's mostly just the mornings or the daytime, you know? Yeah, I think it's so important to not get into a bad routine. So anyways, you could feel claustrophobic or cabin fever. I wrote those as two different ones, but I'm going to clump them as one you could feel claustrophobic or feel cabin fever and I have felt this but I always take it as an opportunity to call a friend and go for a walk call a friend and go walk around in town call a friend I always often will call a friend if I'm feeling squished in and that I'm only inside which also means that I'm probably not talking to very many people I And even if someone's not available in your area, I call someone and I go for a walk. I call someone and go for a drive. I just get out. I go to a different place, a different building. I'll just go shopping and go talk to somebody. Like, go to Target and bring the baby, go to Target and call a friend and just walk around and chit-chat, you know. Or I will make a video or make a podcast outside, you know, or think of ideas outside. I often will want to get outside in some capacity and whether that's getting in the pool with the baby or just, I I, I think the biggest thing is getting outside if you can, even if it's winter, get all packed up, like all bundled up and just get outside. Even if it's for, you know, 30 minutes, just get outside um, get into a conversation with somebody, chit chat, you know, and, and wear yourself out mentally and physically a little bit so that you're ready to come back inside and 
be inside if you need to for a nap or lunch, you know, whatnot. But the biggest thing is making sure you're getting outside, getting some vitamin D and getting into conversations and talking with people or you're reading a book, stimulating your mind in a way that's best for you. Okay, next. You could feel you could start to feel like you aren't you anymore. Let me explain. The tendency with moms when you're a new mom to make there's always this transition where you're not doing as soon as you have a baby, you're not really doing the things that you like to do if you're a stay-at-home mom. This is um because you're just simply taking care of the baby, you're doing everything for the baby, making sure the baby has what they need, and um, your whole life is revolving around this little person. When you are still you, people start to acknowledge the baby before they even they see you and the baby coming, but they only acknowledge the baby, they don't acknowledge you. It's so nice to have somebody that warned me about this, somebody actually warned me, um, right before we got had the baby and I'm very grateful because when you don't really know what's going on you don't need to know how to put words to it that makes it even worse but when you have words for it it kind of just like not justifies it but it like I don't know it puts meaning behind the words that you're or the feelings that you're feeling I guess and then you can like explain what's going on and then you can make a like new thought process like people are acknowledging the baby before and they don't really acknowledge you as often anymore they're acknowledging just the baby and you're second or you're an after a fact or whatever but it's just people love babies and it's not personal you know you just have to know it's not personal and um people start to ask oh how's your baby and what's going on with them and they don't they stop asking about you before you have a baby they're like what's going on in college or what's going on with your work or how are you doing and they ask about you but now when you have a baby they only ask about the baby they don't really necessarily ask about you i digress sorry about that drink um yeah it's just an interesting transition and um You could start to feel like you're not doing the things that you used to do when you didn't have a baby. But I think it's so important that you snap out of it. You realize that you aren't doing the things that you used to do like paint and read and write and meditate on the Lord or go for walks or runs or work out or whatever it is x whatever 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 you know but that you make time to do those things that you are still you you just are taking care of a new life and you've added to your family but you are still you and you still like those things and you're still that's still a part of your life all in all i just think it's super important that you take the time to do the things that you've always loved and maybe things look a little different and you're you're doing new things that you didn't do before i say you continue and be diligent in that maybe you're just playing guitar and you're worshiping the lord you know make time to spend with the lord and and don't put that aside i mean you shouldn't be putting aside spending time with the lord anyways but you know what i mean so you could feel like you have no purpose and I think that's just a trap of the enemy because you're you're you have such a huge purpose taking care of that little child or the children or any kids because that child or these children are as if you're taking care of the Lord himself and that is the biggest thing you could ever do as a mom it's like the most important thing and taking care of them well and making sure that they have the the best quality of life possible and um know the lord you know and so you raising up these little ones 
is the biggest purpose and most important thing as a mom you could ever do. And then there's always that tendency to feel like, you know, I'm not doing enough, you know, and I think moms often feel that and women in general, but you are doing enough just by being a mom, just by spending time with the Lord, being with the Lord. That's the main purpose why we're here is to give and receive love with the Lord and the people around us. And that was his command in the garden. And so if you're doing that, you have purpose and you're doing it already. And then if there's other things you want to do as well, like run a business or run a jewelry business from your home and on social media, do it, you know, or run, you know, a children's program, you know, do it, have that as well. But you are doing enough just by being a mom and just know that. And every single moment when you're sitting there playing with your child, I had this moment this today. Not that I didn't feel like I had purpose, but that I felt like I was wasting time by sitting there playing with my son and playing games. And then, because I wanted to get work done, I wanted to make this podcast, I wanted to make a video. But then in that moment, the Lord stopped me and was like, no, like this is everything. You're spending time with me by spending time with him. And and it calmed my spirit immediately. And I was like, I just get to be with him and to make him laugh. And 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 he gets to make me laugh. And we just get to be. And that's everything. And so I'm really, really happy. And um, it calmed my spirit to feel like, oh, I'm not getting enough done today. No, I, well, I am. And, and look, he's napping now and I get to be, talk with you. So there's that. Um, next, you could feel lonely. This one I have felt on and off just because my husband will be working really busy in the summer and you're often home with just your child or children. And for me, I just, my one child that doesn't talk, you know, he's not talking right now yet. And so it's so important for me to counteract that by getting out and getting in conversations with people, going and knocking on a door, seeing if people want to go for a walk or go to the beach or go to the lake or whatever, go get coffee, go down to the playground, to the park, you know, these things. Or if I need to go into town, inviting a friend along, you know, grab a coffee on the way and make it a date, you know, and go get groceries because we live in the country and we live far away from town. So it's just doing the little things just to get in conversations with people and get out and about and um even if you're just inviting someone over I've done this too like I had to work and my friend had to work but we didn't want to work alone we wanted to work together so she came over and we both did work and watched a movie and worked and so we had a work party and we weren't just weren't alone and the baby was napping or awake and a little bit of both throughout our day but we just worked all day and it was awesome because we were together you know so you can do that or even if you don't have to work and you're just you're like a stay-at-home mom without working just invite a friend over and hang out with you and your kids and go for a walk I've done that with um, my sister and we've just gone for a walk just like um, just being together and with her kids you know I didn't have kids at the time so yeah so awesome Okay. Oh man, I lost my my place. All right. Next. Let me see. Okay. You might want to do different things. Um You might want to pursue your dreams. I think these were maybe can be coupled a little bit. You might want to do different things. Like you might want to do something different with your day than just being at home or taking care of your kid. But don't let that that enemy of that that trap get you. Just remember and be thankful that you get to be home with your child. And that if you were away from him, you wouldn't want to be away from him. Or maybe you would. and, and, And that's okay. But... If you are a stay-at-home mom and that is what you've chosen, don't let the enemy lie to you, you know, that you would want to do something different. Um, The next one I was talking about is you might want, you want to pursue your dreams. 
So maybe there's a way you can pursue your dream while still being a stay-at-home mom. It's kind of going in what I talked about earlier, um, but maybe you can start, you can pursue your dreams while the baby's sleeping or playing or busy. You know, right when the baby wakes up, they'll want to eat or she'll want to eat and then play. And in that time, you can be pursuing your dreams with whatever that is, if that's writing a novel or starting a business or, you know, making a social media account for your dog. I don't know. You know what I mean? So, or playing guitar. You could be practicing your guitar. I don't know. Whatever it is. But there are stay-at-home moms that pursue their dreams every single day. And that is no reason for you to not pursue your dream is because you're a stay-at-home mom. You can pursue your dream while being a stay-at-home mom. And that is just a lie from the enemy. Okay, last one. It is hard to feel excited when you are staying at home every single day. Honestly, I have felt this, but more than not... Okay, well, I'm just going to talk about this. I have fallen into this, and when I do, like, I often am excited every day because I always have, like, a huge list of things I want to do, like work out. I want to lose weight. I'm so excited about losing weight. I'm excited about going for walks. I'm excited about making these podcasts and making videos and I'm excited about getting work done and I'm excited about whatever the day holds visiting people going to see Caleb at work I'm excited about all these things spending time with the Lord you know and growing closer and and learning about him through the word but when there are but I do have days where I am not excited and it's hard to get excited and I feel like you know I fall into a lot of those traps I mentioned like I have no purpose even though I totally do like It just, I'm momentarily believing a lie from the enemy. The biggest thing I think that one can do when you don't feel excited is just to get out. It doesn't take a lot of energy. Sometimes you feel like low energy when this happens. You feel down and out. You don't feel excited. You're not excited about what you're doing and where your life is going. But just go outside. Go for a walk. Get in touch with a friend. And have a friend meet you to just talk about it or just to talk about whatever is going on in their life. Or, and then I think on top of that, spend time with the Lord and and kind of write it out and flesh it out with the Lord. And ask him why you're feeling this way. Why can't you get excited? And, and ask him what you can do to feel excited. And go through of like... That you have nothing to fear, nothing to lose, nothing to hide, and nothing to prove. Like, and, 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 and these things the Lord speaks over you. And so you don't have to worry about, you know, trying to make something happen. But, but again, tying back to having a purpose and a goal really makes you excited each day to jump on the horse and get going because you have a purpose and a goal and a drive and a call, you know. But when you don't have that other thing you're pursuing besides, you know, changing diapers and feeding and watching your child play all day, you know, having that that goal and that dream in front of you and pushing towards it every single day and seeing it grow and seeing it thrive, um, really puts a pep in your step and even if it's just a minuscule growth it really just brings hope and life to your day so I'm sure you can deduct where my heart lies from this whole podcast and I'm sorry that was so long and and maybe I'm not sorry because I haven't had that long of a podcast I don't think ever and I'm really excited about I had so many things to talk about on this podcast and it took forever honestly I was like having to stop and start this podcast a million times I didn't just wasn't able to just sit down and do it for very long but it ended up working out I ended up really loving this podcast and all the things we talked about and kind of fleshing it out um this podcast made me really happy and I'm just really thankful and I hope that you are super thankful with where your situation is at you know when it comes to your kids and if you're not I just pray that you are able to get into the situation that you want and that the Lord will bring the right um 
opportunity maybe for your husband so that you can be at home or um, your dream job while you have kids you know and and everybody's different so there's no mom shaming there's no um, one way is better there's not uh, everybody is different and everybody has different desires and dreams and goals and so um, I love that and that's what makes everybody so amazing and I'm so thankful and I hope you're thankful and um, please feel free to leave a review and subscribe to every to this podcast go to EGT, um, with George D everywhere you can listen to podcasts Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify every, everywhere, Anchor anywhere you can listen to a podcast please subscribe on all your platforms that would be so amazing please um, just leave a review and you can tweet me at GoTGD on Twitter or DM me on Georgia Hertzberg underscore on Instagram. Any ideas or anything, thoughts you would want me to talk about in the future or topics. I love you so much. Thank you for listening. And until next time.